you know, it's funny. You, God gives us certain priorities that he says, do this. And if we do it, it makes sense and it works. But if we don't do it, then we seem to think that we can figure it out and go our own way and make it work anyways. And as we go off on these tangents and try to assemble things together to accomplish God's purpose, it gets entangled in the world and the attitudes and actions and ramifications of the world being involved in God's work doesn't accomplish what he set it out to do. For myself, I see turning everything and everyone back to a relationship with Jesus as a priority. Because if it is our salvation to know Jesus, and if the gospel is such that Jesus died to share it with us, that the good news is that we are forgiven, but not just that, but that he has paid the price for our relationship to be restored with God the Father who loves us, and that he has come also in this glad tidings of great joy that when he was born was to bring to all men that we could know the Father and that we could experience the love and that we could have interpersonal relationship with God that this glad tidings, this gospel, this good news of a right relationship, of a communion with God could be established by being born again then what else would we need? I mean, it all led up to this, and that's all there is. To come to that place of recognition that the cross that Jesus died on, the reconciliation of man was taken care of in that he died and rose again. Everything else is extras, added, a blessing. But the point of it all was going to that moment of sacrifice. And I think God wants to bring us to that place sometimes, to that moment of sacrifice and realization that we're not here for ourselves, we're here to save souls. We're here to bring many brothers and sisters to God and reconcile them with God our Father who is in heaven. When you're tempted not to share the gospel, have you almost given hope, given up hope on certain people? Have you wondered if or how God would ever turn them around because they have been so deeply involved in sin? Let me share a story which I believe will not only encourage and bless you, but also prod you to pray without ceasing and to share the gospel without shame or hesitation. From penthouse to precept. Those are the words scrawled from the white notebook paper bearing the testimony of a woman who came to our precept leadership training. How I pray that my friend's story will encourage you to persevere in prayer for your wayward sons and daughters. You never know how God is at work. After college, I went to work for Penthouse and Viva Magazine as an assistant public relations director handling the national press tours for the contributing writers, editors, and the models. It seemed to be the perfect job for me. Right out of college, exciting, meeting famous people, traveling, writing. I also wrote the in-house advertising copy for the paper, Nick, and it was daring and naughty too. Then I went to church every Sunday and even visited churches on the Sunday I was on the road for Penthouse. Never even struck me as paradoxical. My mainline church never really addressed sin other than generally. My idea was that to sin was to hurt someone else. The university I attended actually encouraged and taught sensuality. I was directed to have sexual relationships by a counselor there to release me from my hang-ups and to help me, quote, grow up. So my job at Penthouse seemed perfect, except that it, after two years, I was weighted down. Something was wrong. It wasn't fun anymore. These people were too serious about others following what they believed. They actually advocated use of these publications in counseling therapy. When I told them how I felt, I came under immediate disfavor. My spirit was in torment. The Holy Spirit was starting to draw me. I was on a spiritual retreat where reflection led me to the knowledge that I needed to make a change the beginning of a long journey through days as an actress, seeing things that sickened my spirit regarding mysticism, homosexuality, and all kinds of sensual perversions, and days in marketing for Hawaiian Tropic where one Christian shone like a light. I asked him why and prayed the sinner's prayer with him. There followed days in advertising and public relations for concerns in Florida, and finally, two and a half years later, real conversion. 
really completely offering myself, all of me, to the Lord at age 28. God is so good, he has sent me teachers and disciples since, a lot of them, right away. And I grew quickly. But now, seven years later, he has led me into really seeking maturity in him, and he is providing lavishly for this growth. God is using priesthood as a primary tool in shaping me, giving me biblical grounding like I never had before and never knew was possible. This digging for knowledge and application of that knowledge is so exciting and so strengthening. It's like a tree starting out as a spiny, bendly little sapling, adding rings and rings of growth as it matures into a magnificent oak with roots reaching down into the earth, giving it stability and its strength and growth. All of this as I try to be the wife, mommy, and now the teacher God wants me to be. He has transformed me, and I am now using my mind, my skills, my mouth for him, and not for the flesh of the world. I praise and thank him for that. Well, beloved, as I read that, I think of two verses. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, John 8, 32. And sanctify them in truth, your word is truth, John 17, 17. But how can they hear the truth unless someone cares enough to share it? I cannot tell you how often I have shared the gospel with someone sitting next to me on a plane and thought, their grandparents, mother, father, or wife would be so excited if they only knew how their prayers are being answered right now. I say this because many times when I have shared the gospel, those individuals have told me of originally hearing it from just such a loved one. You may not see it, but God is at work. He has a Father's heart. The world is on His heart. But He needs men and women who are equipped and established in His Word and not ashamed of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. But how can they believe in someone they have not heard of, and how can they hear unless we tell them? We must awake from our pathetic sleep and arise from our self-centered entanglements and stand for Christ. Get established in His Word and get involved in making disciples. Our time is short, and shorter than we think. And we can't take anything with us when this life is over, except the souls we have invested in. Think on it and pray. God, what would you have me to do? Who and what am I to pray for? With whom am I to share your gospel? I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with great patience and instruction. From 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Well, people often ask me, you know, what does God want me to do? And I just tell them, hey, read it, to be honest, because if you read Matthew, you're going to find what was just said to you. If you read Mark, you're going to find what was just said to you. If you read Luke, you're going to find what was just said to you. If you read John, you'll find the same. It's all about salvation, and it is all about what Jesus did for you. And it's all about telling someone else about that. And the reality is, is that if a person hasn't been given the opportunity to know God because you didn't share it with them and you were sitting next to them, what a tragedy it might be that if that person looked up from hell and cried out and said, why didn't you tell me? I wouldn't want that. I pray that it never happens to me, though it may, and I'm sure that it will. But for both of us, as we read our devotionals and as we know that God's heart is pouring out to the world, Shouldn't we listen to what he's saying about what we might be able to do? Couldn't we ask Jesus to help us to share what we have with someone else that doesn't have what we already know? It could be that God might be speaking to you today. Maybe. What do you think?